Hi everyone, so in the last video I made, I asked you what sort of content you'd like to see and what looks and what types of videos. And someone said a Q and A, and I thought, well, I haven't done one of those for years. I can't even remember the last time I did one. So I thought it was a great idea. And then there were questions left on YouTube. And then I put on my stories, I'm gonna do a Q and A, send me your questions. And I got loads. So I'm gonna do as many as I can today. First question. Which is your favorite room in the house? My favorite room in the house would have to be the kitchen or the sort of kitchen dining area. I really like sitting at the kitchen table because I don't know why. <laughs> I just like being in the kitchen. I like to make tea or a drink, sit there, listen to the radio. Um, if I've got emails to do, I'll always sit in the kitchen and do them. And it's just my favorite room to be in. The next question is, what was your first lipstick? I remember this very clearly. My grandmother took me to a department store, I think it was John Lewis, and she, my first kind of posh makeup, if you like, was a Clinique, it was called a poor minimizing makeup because I had really oily skin, and it was a foundation that you put on and buffed over. And at the same time, I got my first proper lipstick, and it was another Clinique one, and it was called Pink Berry Stain, and it was kind of a sheer, natural looking pink color. Have you ever thought of becoming something other than a makeup artist? Well, I decided I wanted to be a makeup artist at 13. Before that, I wanted to be an artist, but since 13, not really. Although I did entertain the idea of being a picture restorer or a painting restorer, because I love the idea of taking old, like amazing old paintings and learning how to age the pigments and, and work with all the original pigments to restore paintings. I thought that sounded so fascinating because you'd have all that history and art history, but you'd be painting as well and sort of doing makeup at the same time in a weird way. And then more recently, I'd say cosmetic science because I'm a frustrated cosmetic scientist in general. So I have looked into doing a degree part-time in that, um, but that would be not as a full-time career. I think that would just be another string to my bow, but I'm, I'm still thinking about doing that actually. Which Netflix series do you recommend? Programs that I've watched recently and really enjoyed would be The Queen's Gambit and Bridgerton but I am totally obsessed with Succession so I cannot wait for the new series to come back. Another series that I loved and I watched quite recently was The Undoing but it's not on Netflix so not technically answering that question but I did love it. How did you decide to get cats? I didn't decide to get cats. I just was always into cats. I don't know why. My first cat, Danny, was when I was in New Zealand, so I was really young. Then when I came to England, my grandmother knew that I really loved cats and um, she got me a kitten and I called it Susie Bonsoir. I don't know why, but that was my next cat. Um, and then I just had, I've always had cats. Um, the only time I didn't have a cat was when I lived in Paris because... I, was, I knew I was going to be there for a few years and it wasn't really the right time, but pretty much my whole life I've had cats and I don't know why. Maybe I was a cat in a previous life or maybe I just always loved cats. I don't know. If you could do anyone's makeup from the past or present, who would it be? So from the past, this is really difficult because I want to do everybody's, but I'm going to choose an actress and a dancer from the 1920s. I'm gonna choose Thedabara and Josephine Baker because they are the, the strongest characters from that time and I just find them so interesting. And what I would like to use are the original products that were available at that time because the cosmetics industry was really exploding along with the movie industry and entertainment and they just represent such strong characters and both had very unique style and looks and makeup looks. So I would choose those two. And from the present, um, I know, I got booked about a month ago to do Anya Taylor-Joy, who's the actress in The Queen's Gambit. And I was very excited because I think she's got such a, a beautiful, interesting face. And then sadly we went into lockdown and the shoot got postponed. So I was really disappointed, but hopefully that one will come round again. Where is the first holiday you will go on when you can? Oh, the thought of going on holiday is so exciting. I just, I'm desperate for it. I just can't wait to go on holiday. 
I would like to go to either northern Italy, so the Dolomites, or maybe Austrian mountains, the Austrian Alps. I want to be in the mountains. I want to be walking in beautiful meadows full of wild flowers. Failing that, I would like to be in the Greek islands, just sailing around from island to island and jumping into that incredible turquoise sea. What inspires you? If I'm looking for inspiration for a shoot or for makeup ideas, the last place I look at is either in magazines or in makeup books or on social media looking at makeup because I feel like you're just feeding yourself um, something that already exists. Whereas if you go elsewhere, so I've always loved to look at things that aren't necessarily anything to do with makeup and that's where I get my inspiration. Nature's a big one. This is probably, I've had this book since the 90s. I remember buying it in like where was it? It got above the mid nineties and thinking this is the best makeup inspiration book I've ever found. And it's just full of incredible photographs of beetles with colors and butterflies. And, and I've used it so many times for inspiration on, on color and texture and all sorts of things. Another one is Brancusi. Everyone knows I'm obsessed with Brancusi that knows me. Um, just looking at the shapes that he created, so modern. If you look at light reflection, Rather than look at like a contouring highlighting book, look at his sculptures and look the way the light and shade plays on them. You'll get so many ideas. Um, I like odd books like this. I think I found this in a charity shop, which is the history of the bazaar. And it's just full of mad, mad stuff. Interiors books I love. So anything to do with modern interiors, floristry, um, fabrics. The Wallace Collection is a museum that I love in London and I like going there just to look at the wallpapers and the, the furniture and things like that because again it's colour and texture. A book that I don't have here but everyone thinks I'm crazy when I say it really inspires me is a book that Sam McKnight the hairdresser gave me about rare breeds of chickens <laughs> which sounds like how can you be inspired by that but it was this book just full of these incredible chickens that had all these amazing feathers that were all different colours and I've never seen anything like it. And I remember when he sent it to me, I thought, why has he sent me this? And then I looked at it and I was like, wow, look at the, the color combinations were just mind blowing. So things like that, or even like fanzines, I've got books on fanzines, or um, I've got a book about camouflage paints um, that are used in the army or technology, science, anything. What makeup trends are in for 2021? I don't follow trends per se. I think you make your own trends and come up with your own ideas. But I must say that I do think this year, I feel a very strong sense of maybe not even this year, maybe it's more towards the end of this year. But I feel like there's going to be an, uh, a sense of the roaring 20s again. Because if we look back and things usually happen in cycles, if you look back to the last pandemic in, in 1918 and then we're coming out of the, of the war and people felt the need for self-expression, for fun, for creativity to really let off steam. I can imagine as things start to free up again and people start to go out and there'll be a real celebratory sense to make up and I feel like there's going to be almost like fancy dress, a fancy dress element coming back with makeup, if that makes sense. So I can imagine, um, can you imagine like when music festivals are open again or, or, or are happening again or concerts or parties and things, people are going to be so, I know I personally am going to be so excited to be out that you'll almost want statements. So whether it's silver eyes or maybe embellishments or it'll be more... Um, I think there will be a sort of a trend for this almost, I'm saying fancy dress makeup, I don't think it's that. I'm trying to get my words right here. Um, yeah, celebratory makeup, which is artistic and creative and fun and maybe out there. So maybe the face is all quite natural and then maybe you'll stick stars that are all over your face. It'll be something like that. But I, I genuinely believe that we're going into quite an interesting phase of makeup as we come out of this very dark period. The Roaring Twenties are gonna come back, I'm telling you. What made you decide to do YouTube without any sponsorship? I've never done any sponsored content, so been paid to mention any products on any of my social channels, actually. So that's not just my YouTube, my Instagram, my Facebook, and my Twitter. 
The reason is that for me personally, I I just wouldn't sound like myself. I know I couldn't do it. If I knew I was being paid just to talk about something that I hadn't organically discovered myself, organically used and organically liked, then I would sound different. I wouldn't feel comfortable. It's just not me. I Unless it's coming from here and I genuinely like it or I'm genuinely excited about something. And even if it's a new product I'm trying out, it's just, it's on my own terms and I am comfortable with that. So that's how it works for me. And that's what I decided early on. And I'm glad I stuck to it. How do I clean my makeup brushes? I like to use the Sigma gloves. That's the big latex or rubber glove with all the nodules over it. Sigma came out with it about seven or eight years ago. And I remember lots of people criticizing it, saying it was a gimmick. And we tried it and we thought, God, this is amazing. And I think the people who criticized it may not have been going on shoots every other day and using hundreds of brushes, because honestly, when you've got a lot of brushes to clean, I find it absolutely invaluable. So depending how dirty the brush is, I'll either use washing up liquid or baby shampoo. So washing up liquid will be for really strong pigments, maybe on an editorial shoot or very oily substances or something that is gonna really stick into the brushes. Otherwise it will be baby shampoo. Put it onto the glove, use the go round and round on the nodules. There's all different shapes. You can really get into the bristles. Then rinse them, keep them facing down because you don't want water to go inside the ferrule and then it will ruin the brush. So swirl down, just give it a nice little squeeze out and then give it another rinse until it's clear. Then just squeeze them and pull them back into shape and then leave them over the edge of a, put them on a towel, but over the edge of a table so that the air can dry them evenly around. And that's how I like to wash brushes. How do you keep your passion for makeup going? Are there times when you feel uninspired? Yes, absolutely there are times when I feel uninspired. Usually when I've been doing too much makeup. So if I've been back to back on shoots, doing loads and loads and loads of makeup because there's no time to recharge your creative battery. So for me, if I felt like that, I would do other things. Maybe have a day off, go to a museum or go on holiday or go for a walk or just do something totally different because when you're doing other things, maybe if you're just doing nothing, then I start to get new ideas and feel inspired again. Like I get all my best ideas when I have a long bath. I think of so many things when I'm in the bath. I don't know why, just floating. I always have these, um, yeah, you just, just new ideas come into my head. So I think I get my best ideas for makeup and, and I get passionate about it when I'm actually not necessarily doing it, if that makes sense. What are your future plans for your amazing jewellery line? Well, firstly, thank you so much for saying it's amazing. I'm really enjoying doing it. It's definitely still quite a hobby, so it's not really that I have any like huge plans for it. I just love finding new stones and making new things. I just did my little hoops with my charms and I've got some new charms that I'm working on, which are really exciting. And also I've got some new stones coming for rings, but there's no like grand master plan or anything. And that's actually why I'm probably enjoying it so much. It's as I get inspired and as I find lovely things and I'm able to make them and then when they're ready, I can put them on my site. So it's it's quite an organic process for me and um, I'm really enjoying it. So thank you for saying it's amazing. What was your background before you got into makeup? And I hope to see more of your cats. That was one question. So my background before makeup was that, well, I was into make, being a makeup artist from when I was a teenager. So everything I did was really just working towards that, but I couldn't obviously go straight. I couldn't leave school and become a makeup artist overnight. I had to work my way up. I had to practice, I had to work my way into the industry. And during that time I did lots of different jobs. So I worked on a makeup counter. I worked as a receptionist. I applied for this job and I said I'd done it before, which I hadn't. And I turned up for the first day of work and it was like an old fashioned switchboard thing. And there was like 127 lines. So you literally had to like be pressing this computer and putting all these lines through. And it was horrendous. And I was, the, 
there was another girl that kind of helped me but I remember at the end of the day I was so tense because I've been so terrified all day that I was going to mess it all up um I also worked in an architect's office I worked in a restaurant at night at one point when I was really trying to get my portfolio together and I worked for an agency where they just send you to do all different jobs I remember like packing stuff at the body shop and then working at an ad agency the next day and um but yeah it was all working towards being a makeup artist and can we see more of your cats? Yes, when I film at home, definitely. Ted is still doing his talks, um, doing brilliant talks actually at the moment. So when I next film at home, I'll try and get him on camera again. What's your favorite movie? I have lots of favorite movies, so it's hard to say just one. I love watching films. I like watching new films, old films, classics, everything. I think some of my favourite films, obviously Breakfast at Tiffany's I love. I love the film Orlando because it's my favourite book. So I did really enjoy that, although it's quite a dated film now because it was made in the 80s. But um, because I love the book so much, I still like the film. That's with Tilda Swinton. Um, I do love Sofia Coppola's films. I loved Marie Antoinette and I love The Virgin Suicides. And then I just like fun films, like I love The Wedding Crashers. I love Fifty First Dates, not the best film ever, but it's so relaxing and it's so fun and I love it. And I love anything with Melissa McCarthy in because I think she's hilarious. Um, yeah, so that's quite a few favourites. Which of your lipsticks do you reach for the most? Well, at the moment I'm wearing this one, which actually doesn't come out until May, um, but I'm loving it. So I'll tell you more about that a bit later. It's got a great name, by the way. I'm excited about the name I've given it. Um, and of my existing lipsticks, I'd say that I'm mainly wearing probably Velvet Beauty at the moment because I'm trying to feel like spring is here. I know it's not, but I'm trying to give myself to wear something that feels a bit more spring-like. Which skincare step makes the biggest difference for you? So I'm going to repeat myself here because I think I made a video in like 2010 or 11 saying that my one of my favorite things to do is a double cleanse. So it's that idea of sort of taking your makeup off at the end of the day and then using something which is a cleanser that stays on a bit longer and really massaging it and getting all the the circulation going back in your skin and making yourself feel really, really clean. So I'm... Yeah, I'm a bit like a broken record, but I still love doing a really good double cleanse with like a balm cleanser or something that I'm able to really massage with and use a cloth. And um, it's such a ritual. I think I just enjoy the process. But as soon as I've done that, it's probably because of all the massaging, my face instantly looks brighter and fresher. What's your favorite type of food? So I haven't eaten meat for about 30 years now. Um, so my favorite type of food is probably anything that doesn't involve meat. And if I was going out to a restaurant, then I would love to go to, they're all closed now, but if I was able to, I would go to Rocker, which is a Pan-Asian restaurant in London that I absolutely love. And um, I'm dreaming of going there when they reopen. Aside from makeup, what are your other passions? Things that I really love doing are going for walks. I love going on long walks. So sometimes I walk around Regent's Park and all around the architecture around there, like walking around the back streets, looking for little private things. Or I love walking around London, looking at the blue plaques, which are the things that are on the buildings that say who used to live there historically. Um, I love doing that. I love walking on Hampstead Heath. I love walking in nature. I love animals. So I love, um, follow so many animal sanctuaries on Instagram and I spend my whole time on Instagram, not really looking at makeup, but looking at um, animals, I like watching programs about them. I know I've got cats, but I'd love to have cats, dogs, pigs. If I had space, I'd have loads and loads of animals. And I really enjoy cooking as well. When I've got time, I absolutely love cooking. I find it so relaxing and so meditative. So I'm going to stop there. It feels like it's quite a long video now, but thank you so much for sending your questions and I hope you enjoy this video. See you soon. Bye.